And today we have a bunch of redstone clocks. Guys, we are going to do a whole bunch. We're going to do five today, five tomorrow. MZPE and Bedrock for the win. Hey there, guys. Skippy here for Room Skippy 6 Gaming. Guys, coming to you from the redstone world and uh, yeah, with some redstone love. Guys, today we are going to do five hopper clocks that you need. Not hopper clocks, I mean redstone clocks. Redstone clocks that you need in your Minecraft world, right from rapid fire to long ones. It all depends, but when you do redstone, you need clocks and yeah. So for this one here, let's go for uh, 442 likes. If you are down with the cause, don't forget to hit me up below. Guys, Twitter always follows. Follow me on Twitter and uh, yeah, you'll get news, let's plays, updates, info and stuff. So let's jump into this guy. We're going to do five today and five tomorrow. Once tomorrow's video comes out, I will link them both to each other in the eye in the top of the screen. I'm sorry about not doing them all at once, but I'd rather have the time to go through each one. So we're actually going to explain why each one works, how each one works and have a lot of fun while we do it. So let's go in here. We're going to start with the number one clock. So this is what made me make this video in the first place was I was trying to explain to somebody how to put this clock. This clock has been used by tons of people. It's on the concrete farm. It's on a sugar cane farm. It's it's definitely the most reliable and quick rapid fire clock. You're going to see here we go. Bang. So you can tell right here, it actually is going. You just can't tell. So you'll be able to see it there. Believe it or not, it's actually going the other way too. Even if you do this, bang, you can see it's going even on the one tick. So you just can't see it visually because it's so fast based on the other one. So let's just do this. And let's go. Number one, most reliable, fast, rapid fire clock in the game. Best because we can actually go ahead and use this before we go to the nether. There are zero quartz in it. Uh, no observers or anything like that. No stickies. So let's do this, guys, again. Very key clock. And yes, so let's go over here and yeah, make a waffle pattern. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to do them right next to it. While I do it, I'm going to explain what happens. So basically, this is going to start out. We're just going to make our shape. And I'm going to show you exactly the way that the redstone goes. Uh, to do what it does so bang there's our shape so we're going to start off with their lever this lever is going to go right here it doesn't matter which side this lever is going to power this redstone dust once it powers this redstone dust it's going to go ahead and hit this torch the torch stays on right now but the redstone see so now the torch is off so let's go ahead and this is where the repeater comes in if you put it here you have no delay you put the dust here the dust here and then whatever you're triggering right here. So the easiest way to explain this is once I turn this off now, what happens is this torch turns on, it goes through the redstone repeater, it powers this dust, which powers this dust, which turns this on. And then it keeps this going in a cycle, right? Basically it goes like this. This dust gets powered, but at the same time when this dust gets powered to trigger this, this is going here, turning on this and then bringing the whole cycle back. You can see right here, bang, it goes fast and slow. You can make it a little slower, a little slower and a little slower. Yes, very easy. Let's move on to the next clock. And so this brings us to the newest or the next clock. This is also a rapid fire clock. However, this clock is less reliable in my opinion than the other one, but it's much more, you know, easy compact. I guess you could call it easy compact. You also need quartz because it has two observers and such. You can see when you put two observers back to back, you create a rapid pulse. Yet again, this is another situation where the pulse is so fast that you don't see it, but you can see that it actually goes. Once it goes like that, you know that this is a thing. This circuit didn't always exist, guys. We used to do lots of timing before these came out, and this is one of the number one things that people use with the observers since they've come out. Like I said, a little more expensive because sticky piston and you need quartz for both of these guys. Let's make this guy. It's very simple. Like I said, the one thing I will tell you is it's less reliable. Sometimes in your world, if you leave your world and leave it on, I, I'll be honest, I come back and you'll see it lock. It'll lock, it'll just be powered on and you have to break it or you know do something to fix it right up. But yeah, so it's easy as that. Let's just go like this. like this and so put your observers facing each other just like this so you want one facing this way and one facing this way if for whatever reason you just want a clock you don't want to turn it on or off you got it right here so it's easy enough like that but if you want to be able to turn it on and off you're just gonna have to go ahead and throw this extra sticky icky right here get rid of this guy throw a lever right here and now you're you know turns it on turns it off it's all up to you from this point in time and uh, yeah we can go ahead and put a lamp right here and yeah and there you go but like I said, it is it is going. It's just going so fast, right? Next clock. 
And this brings us to the most famous, the most famous redstone clock in Minecraft history. It even has a spot on the Wikipedia. That's right, a spot on the Wikipedia. It's right here. And yes, so it is called Ethonian Hopper Clock. It is also called an Etho Clock. I would call it simply an Etho Clock. A lot of people just call it Hopper Clock now because it's been used so much. However, if you are OG Minecraft like me, you know that, uh, yeah, Etho made it. So you could tell basically wherever this redstone block is, is where your power source goes out. And yeah, the only thing that's different about this is kind of, it's gonna be on for X and off for X. This can go short or long. Long story short is, eight ticks to four minutes and 16 seconds. It all depends on what you have in these hoppers. So say you have, uh, let's let's just empty them out right here. Bang. It's gonna take a second to empty them all out. And then do this. So once there's nothing left in this guy, you can see it's empty, which means it's not working at all. If you wanted to go eight ticks, that's gonna involve one item in the hopper, bang, and you can see it's going very fast. It's going specifically eight ticks. Eight ticks, guys, for those who do not know, there is 20 ticks in a real life second. So that said, it is going two, two times, or so two per second, but actually a little bit more, 2.2-ish, something like that. If you wanted to go four minutes and 16 seconds, this can easily be created by putting five full stacks of whatever in there, and now it's going to last four minutes and 14 seconds. So this is one of the most adjustable clocks that exist uh, in Minecraft, and yeah, and I'm gonna show you another way, because a lot of people, they don't want it to stay on and off for, like right here, basically it's gonna be on for four minutes, off for four minutes. So I'm gonna show you a way to fix that up uh, after we do it. So let's just build this, guys, you know. I'm gonna need four blocks, two comparators, two redstone dust, one block of redstone, and uh, two hopperios. And uh, yeah, let's build this guy out. So basically, you're gonna wanna start with a four downer. Once this guy's down, go ahead and put a hopper into the ground, crouch place, hopper into this guy, jump on top of him, do the same thing, crouch place, hopper into them. They go into each other, get it, got it? Comparator out, comparator out. As you know from comparators, when there's something in this hopper, it's gonna push the signal and it's gonna hit this guy, which is gonna hit this dust. Same thing on this side. We're hoping that it does the same thing. Not hoping. We know for sure it will. Uh, but yeah, once we do this, you know that it's going to work because we're going to go ahead and throw regular pistons right here. And here. So basically what's going on is this is now our power source. The reason it works the way it works is because whichever hopper has the stuff in it is going to push this guy forward, making the other guy work. So we could actually just go ahead and throw these guys in here. See, it's going fast. So basically, when the items are on this hopper, this piston pushes it forward. When the items are in this hopper, they push it this way. It's as easy as that. What we can do now is show you that the one thing is where the actual signal comes out. So your signal is going to come out of right here. So what happens is people don't necessarily want to have the power running for four minutes, right? You're not like, oh, I need power on for four minutes, power off. So this is going to be where it goes. So if you wanted to just click, right, you're going to want to pulse. What you could do is I got a little, we had a big talk about this in our Discord today. So I got a few people giving ideas on what they do and what they use. So Jax gave, I think not Jax, Jeb gave a, f a really good thought process that what he does is he does this. He puts two redstone repeaters like this. And then he puts this like this. And then he puts a redstone torch, which we can actually just grab from right uh, here. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong way. Bang. So, and then he puts a redstone torch right here. So basically what happens here is every time this guy switches, that redstone st torch just flashes. That's all it does. So this one's full. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Empty it out the old fashioned way. This seems to be what's gonna dominate the video here. But what you can see is every time it goes back and forth, it's gonna flash that torch. So shout outs to Jeb for showing us the way he does it. But you can see basically that's good. And then if that's not enough for you guys, if you need a longer pulse, because sometimes you need a longer pulse, then just throw a repeater here. And then you can make that pulse take longer very easily, make it a four tick and see how long it there it goes through and there. And it's up to you from there. Next clock. Okay, so this one here is a tricky one. Yes, it is. So this one has, I don't know the full story on where it came from. I can only tell you 
what I know about it for sure. So this is a 30 second clock. It takes 30 seconds for this minecart to go through this spider web to go and hit this. And once it hits this guy right here, it's going to hit this pressure plate and then it's going to shoot back up, signal the power and you're going to see it right now and do it all over again. So the first time I ever saw this clock was when I made a melon farm, a melon farm that's right years ago. And I got the melon farm from Fizz Cannon and JX, if I remember correctly. And this was part of that farm. So I can only imagine that they were, you know, messed with it. I don't know. I can't guarantee it for sure. And then I saw it in the chat the other day and it reminded me of it. And I was like, OK, so the one thing is, if you want to turn it off, you can't turn it off now. See, it doesn't work. You have to turn it off once the minecart is still above the actual above the actual web. So now once it lands and then you could turn it on and off. However, it is a very legit 30 second clock. You notice how it stays there now and then bang. The one thing I will say is it is not the most reliable clock in Minecraft. It's a little less than reliable often in that world. And it was in our autocraft world because I'm pretty sure Fizz himself made it in the autocraft world. The problem was often you'd come back and for whatever reason, this is an entity and it disappeared. Uh, so yes, for that reason, it's not my favorite, but it is a reliable 30 second clock and uh, or it is a semi reliable 30 second clock. Let's make this guy. You're going to need a minecart, a pressure plate, a slime block. It's very expensive too. Uh, a rail, a repeater, redstone dust, a sticky piston, a cobweb and a lever. However, if you are trying to impress your homies, uh, you, will, you will be feeling good because this is pretty much as fancy of a clock as you can get going. So let's get this guy going. And yes, yeah, start with your solid block right here. Let's actually just get him out of there so we can. Perfect. Once this guy's up like this, we could go ahead and uh, yeah, grab this guy. Redstone repeater right here and uh, obsidian here. So there are other choices. You don't need obsidian here. You could use furnaces and stuff like that, but I don't want to spend all day with that. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, yeah. So grab your sticky icky piston. Let's bring this guy right here. Sticky icky. Sticky piston is going to go right next to this guy right here. And we're going to go ahead and throw a redstone dust right in there. Easy enough. Bang dust. So the whole point of this is actually going to be this guy going here. Let's go ahead and uh, put our out right here. And then let's go ahead and put our pressure plates right here. So grab yourself, grab yourself your, uh, yeah, your cobwebs. Wow, that was the most difficult cobweb placement uh, in the history of Minecraft, FYI. Take this guy, take this guy, take this guy, and bang. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to put this guy here, this guy here. Stack it up by one. Go ahead and put your lever down here. Perfecto. And then what you're going to do is you're going to actually just, you're going to need solid blocks, basically. And your one track. And you want to drop the minecart into it. So the easy way to do that is to do this. Place the minecart in it and bust it. And it's in now. So now your timer is officially started. Like I said, if you want to stop it, make sure you put this up before it hits the bottom. And now it's on and off. Done, done, and done. Let's go do the last one. And last but not least, guys, this is a five-minute timer. Yes, that's right. It is going to do exactly five minutes every single time. So this is a very not commonly used. I've only ever used it. I feel like in one tutorial, it was a mining machine. It's an automatic mining machine that would basically pour lava, pour water, pour lava, pour water. So it wasn't actually a mining machine. It would actually be an automatic mountain generation machine. And uh, yeah, this is the tool that it used at the top of it. You can see basically in Minecraft, it takes five minutes for an item to despawn. So uh, whenever you need to have a circuit, you can have this guy here and it's on. And every time you need a pulse, what we're going to do from this guy here is yeah. So in five minutes when it despawns, guess what happens? Bang off shoots another one does it again you can reverse this signal uh, if you really wanted to just with uh, say uh, you know a torch or something like that and yeah and basically you can power it on and off every single time you do this bang it's gonna do it and do it again every single time it's gonna last five minutes five minutes and do it again it's gonna repeat itself it's super awesome and cool let's build it so again limited use not sure exactly the best uses of it but there is uses for it just need some blocks, pressure plate, repeater, 
Don't I don't know why. I guess you need dirt. You are right. So I am right. Okay. And uh, one observer right here. So let's start this guy off. So make it like this, like this, and like this. Once this guy is up with this, uh, yeah, you know what we're doing. So basically what we want to do is shoot our power down. This is going to shoot our power down like this. Once it shoots that guy, we're going to want to hit this torch into the back like this. See that it's going back and it's going into the solid block? That's easy. This guy here into the black, into the solid block. It's going to go here. It's going to be a pressure plate. Let's go ahead and I guess, yeah, Skippy left a dispenser out of the mix. Make sure that it's the dispenser. Uh, be careful. Um, it, make sure you don't put any dynamite in there. You might want to switch that to a dropper, actually. I think that might be safer, but yeah, do this. Let's do this as well. Let's go ahead and grab our glass and put it up. So you might say, hey, Skippy, why don't you just put why don't you just put a repeater right here and then go straight to the signal? You can't. Eventually, if this eventually, if this guy's not here, eventually that's that actual dirt won't land on that eventually it'll land over here believe it or not i've tested it out i wanted to do it that way but at some point in time that dirt is going to fly off the pressure plate and it's going to see what it did there if it does it the other side you know total big trouble so once this guy's like this we're going to go ahead and uh once this guy's like this we're just going to go ahead and grab our sticky piston the sticky piston like i said is necessary with the redstone block and yeah throw yourself all of these guys in here and the way that you start it off is by actually doing it your dying self by like this and there you go that is uh, that one and i'm going to give honorable mention i'm going to give honorable mention i have an honorable mention honorable mention to the daylight sensor the daylight sensor where is he over here so he gets honorable mention because it doesn't work as simply, but it does kind of work as simply. Long story short is when you put a daylight sensor in, it will sense uh, when it turns day and when it turns night. So uh, yeah, it basically has power when it's day. And then when it turns night, it turns off. That would be 14 minutes. A Minecraft day is 20 minutes. Seven of it is night and 14 minutes of it is day. So if you were to invert this sensor, that means that it would actually power at night, which means that this would be a seven minute timer. So. Regular daylight sensor is a 14 minute timer. Inverted daylight sensor is a seven minute timer. I didn't want to give it its own spot in the mix, but I thought that I would tell everybody about it because it did good. So stay tuned tomorrow, guys. We're going to do five more awesome circuits. And yeah, slowly but surely, guys, these guys don't count. I said I was going to release a download of my map at 100 tutorials. These guys don't count. Big tutorials only. Don't forget to smash that like before you go. Don't forget as well to subscribe to my channel for, uh, yeah, cool tutorials, let's plays, and stuff. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one.